So what you'll be viewing here as I get started <clears throat> is the transformation of a 26-foot rider truck into a functional art gallery. Um, my name is Jonathan Whitfield, um, and I'm here to present the Rider John Peters Nomadic Gallery. <clears throat> Before um, I talk a lot about the gallery, let me give you a little background about myself. Um, I have the unique position of um, both um, a job and a career, but they're completely different things. My day job is a high school physics teacher and the sponsor and uh, coach of the Estacado chess team, the Matador Knights. I was a little double booked today, so I just got back from our first uh, tournament at Estacado, uh, which we did win. Um, thank you. <clears throat> we won in a big way, actually. We took all their trophies. Um, so uh, today, however, I don't want to talk about what I do as a job. I want to talk about my, my career. Uh, my career is as an artist. Um, I've had uh, national exhibitions um, for the last seven to eight years, and I've also um, had the opportunity to have some international exhibitions, um, both in China and in France. When uh, you live in Lubbock, Texas, um, you have probably found out that we are geographically separated from um, other um, people, um, uh, exciting, wonderful things that go on anywhere from six hours from us. We've got this wonderful bubble of uh, six hour drive time uh, to have a, a lot more viewing of your creativity. So what, what we decided to do as a group, um, the three of us, um, was get all of our objects out from Lubbock to some place um, where we could have more dialogue um, with our uh, with people that would be interested in what we make. And this is our solution. Um, I represented a collaborative group. Um, there, as you can see, three of us in the video. Um, Ryder Richards, who earned his BFA from Texas Tech University, um, and then his MFA at TCU. Myself, John uh, Whitfield. Um, my Bachelor of Science was at Wayland Baptist University, and my MFA was at Texas Tech University and Peter Chizinski, who earned his BFA at Texas Tech and his uh, master's at Cornell University. We came together one day and decided that what we would need to do to really have some uh, dialogue and to really have some exposure was create a system where we could take our art someplace else. Um, we did this in a local bar, having a few beers. Sometimes creativity tends to flow, and of course, thinking is contagious. So as we went through this idea of how do we make this work? How can we possibly take uh, a truck someplace and turn into a gallery? Um, we, we actually came up with a pretty viable solution. Um, we knew we wanted a few things. Uh, we knew we wanted access uh, for people to come into the truck and then to be able to leave the truck. Um, we wanted some type of flow, so the first thing we did was we found a truck that we could get a side door and a back lift gate. We built staircases for the back lift gate and the side door so people could enter and exit and there could be a flow through the truck. We needed to hang our work and we didn't want to hang it just on what the normal truck would provide. So we took 13 8 by 4 drywall panels and wrapped it with angle iron so when we moved these panels they wouldn't get beat up on the way to our venue. Um, we uh, engineered a simple track light system that would go into the top of the truck and then we stole power from various other places that we would park next to. Um, we actually wrote a grant at one point uh, for a generator to the Puffin Foundation for $750 and got that grant. Um, and it was uh, basically the only money we have to date made on the project. Um, we started five years ago. Um, we've had 22 exhibitions um, all over the state and also an uh, exhibition in Oklahoma and in Phoenix, Arizona. So what you're seeing here is the second version of that truck. So we've graduated from our drywall panels and uh, track lighting system to uh, this Russian nest egg technology. Um, inside these uh, crate-like boxes are smaller crate-like boxes identical to them other than about a 10% reduction. 
And as you saw in the video, as they fold out, they become the panels that go on the truck's walls. Inside the smaller crate, inside of these crates, you have the opportunity to store your work and store your materials that you will need in order to transform your own rider truck or moving truck into a gallery system. Underneath these crates, uh, underneath these, uh, these wall devices are pallets, um, but these aren't your typical pallets. Um, these pallets actually become the back staircases and the side staircases for the truck themselves. So they telescope out, and then the slats that go across the pallets fold out with piano hinges to become stairs, so you have staircases um, both in the back and the side of the truck. Um, so, of course, this is what it looks like before we, um, we actually start our, um, our transformation. Now, we had some really interesting questions um, the first few times that we did this. Um, we did this in Marfa, actually, the first time five years ago. So in Octo October, it'll be our five-year anniversary. Most of the questions weren't about the art that we brought. Um, a lot of the questions were actually about how did we do this? Why would we do this? You know, what, um, what, what are you doing? Did you buy this truck? You know, which, of course, we thought was hilarious. Um, of course not. Uh, we rented the truck, and we almost could have bought a truck for as much as diesel was those days to drive to Marfa and back. Um, but we, uh, we rent the truck, of course. We, we talked about how this could work for everyone. Um, a lot of what um, I'm showing you today, of course, is available um, on our WordPress site. Uh, we've picked WordPress in particular because of its uh, transparency and the, you know, the idea of the blog sphere um, giving you that access. Um, and we've also uh, been able to create a document where relatively anyone could to have this system available for them. So over the years, um, and you can see us there, we're unloading. There's the pallet underneath that's already been transformed, to, transformed into the stairs. Over the years, we've graduated from just showing our art to showing other um, artists. Um, we've had artists um, in our truck curated shows now from um, all over the country. Um, and, uh, and, to, and also the world. We've had artists that are international, internationally known. Um, I think that they understand uh, the innovation behind it. They see that there's inspiration there. And of course, they want to be able to be nomadic also. Um, and so they're, uh, they're very excited about what we do. This slide is not correct. Um, we don't ever turn the truck on its side. <laughs> Although, now that I've seen this, there might be something there. We might look into that. So uh, here's our kit. So you can see in our brochure here that um, we actually do have uh, some plans for anyone to do this. Um, this is a show where this version 2 kit was uh, indoctrinated. It was in Austin at the Texas Buy and All. We were invited there. Um, it's a uh, fantastic, of course, two-year, uh, every two-year um, art show in, in Austin, all over Austin. We were truly nomadic that evening. Um, this was our first show. Um, and we set up during the day, we put up our show, and then we had another venue that evening. So we broke down the show, drove across town, and then reset our show for another show that evening. So we had two exhibitions in one night, which of course is as efficient as, as we could be at that point in time. And this is a little bit of the, uh, the uh, CV that we have here. So these are some of the shows that you see. We actually just got back from San Antonio. Um, last uh, two weeks ago, we went to San Antonio and did two more venues, one at Blue Star Contemporary and one at Lone Star Contemporary, or Lone Star uh, Art Group, um, both sponsored by the fantastic Bill Fitzgibbons. Um, and we had two separate shows, a curated show and then a performance show. The last thing that I want to show you um, is... Uh, a document that we've created. Um, it, t it tells you a lot about the resources that anyone would need to do this. We want this to be outsourced. We, we need for people to take this idea and, and, and do it on their own. So what we've done is we've given them every possible thing that they would need in order to do this. Um, unfortunately, you really need three main things. And these three things you've probably heard all day. Um, you need people. Um, you need people that are like-minded, um, that are um, hardworking um, and basically believe that impossible is nothing. Um, you need money, unfortunately. Um, with the three of us, um, as I've said before, after five years, I, th I think we might have made about $20 a piece. Um, 
maybe $50. Uh, but that's okay because breaking even is just as good as, as getting your, your ideas out there. But you must have some type of money. What's nice about this project is that people are interested in, in actually donating. Version one actually is going to Marfa uh, again um, with a group of Texas Tech students um, that have gotten funding from Texas Tech. They got $1,000 to be able to take the truck down and they're using our uh, old pieces um, to start their journey. Um, and of course you need time. Um, those three things are, um, are very, sometimes very difficult to, to get all in the same place. But this is a, a simple breakdown of what you would need if you went to your local um, hardware store. Now what's nice is that it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, carpentry skills in order to create this device, uh, this kit. Um, some rudimentary carpentry skills and, uh, and, of course, a little bit of innovation, inspiration, and time will get you right here. So it tells you exactly what to buy, and it also tells you exactly how to put it together. And even though the video w went by very quickly, and we're fast, but we're not quite that fast, um, we, uh, we also, I think you'll, you'll be able to see some of how this is put together um, through, this, uh, through this presentation. Um, as you can see, we try to do very, very little waste. Um, so as you go through uh, our document, you can see that when you get done, there's a very small amount of waste when you get finished. We want to be efficient. So when we help you out with this, uh, you'll know exactly how to do it in the most efficient manner. This is uh, the panels that you're seeing here. When we started with our initial uh, middle um, track lighting system, we ran into some problems with just a good overall lighting. And so on this uh, venture, on, on the kit two, version two for RJP, Nomadic Gallery, we decided to um, inset the lights on one side that then would of course light up uh, the uh, artwork and the panels on the other side. And it's, it's been very, uh, it's a very good system. Another thing that we have in this truck um, is a projection in the rear section. So as you walk up the back stairs, we have a screen that is uh, being able to be erected and put back there. It's just the depth needed for most projectors that you can purchase at uh, um, you know, your local electronics store. And it gives you a fairly good size image on that screen. Um, so you can also now do video work in the truck. And it's a nice place to store some of your tools uh, behind that screen as you're presenting your work wherever you may be. <clears throat> so this is the panel unfolded. Um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure we did was not destroy the integrity of the rider of the the moving truck, whichever moving company you prefer. Um, the the exact dimensions of these panels do work exactly with the truck that we typically use, which is rider trucks. But we didn't want to screw into the walls. We didn't want to lose our deposit, um, and so these panels um, have a system where they can actually hang on the existing. Uh, skeletal surface of the truck in the back so you're not actually doing any harm to it, the truck itself. And this is the back side of these panels so you can see the hinges and the spacing is all there for you. We also discovered that after you put them in together you need to have a little bit of uh, attachment that will keep them from flying apart as you ship them. Um, this was one of the major um, uh, imp improvements to, the ver to version 1 as version 2 is that now we don't have to drive all of our components to the place in the back of a rider truck. We can put it all together on our pallets that were stairs and our panels that are folded together, strap it all together real nicely, and then ship it to where you're going to be. Then after it's been shipped there, you go to your local uh, uh, moving truck place, drive the truck the short distance from where you shipped it to, to your venue, or you ship it immediately to your venue. So it saves you um, a lot of money and diesel, if nothing else. <clears throat> you don't want to stack them three high, okay? We found out that that doesn't work, and I'm not going to tell you that story. It'll make this whole thing seem less valid. <clears throat> so this is your material list, um, and this is what you use, um, and then this, of course, is your, your stairs. And it's kind of hard to understand how this works if you haven't actually seen it. Um, so I wanted to take just a moment to show you how this works. You cut your boards for both the side stairs, which is the shorter one, and then the long one up above it, and then you use piano hinges. So they're folded together as a pallet and then fold out to become a stair, uh, a stair step. 
This is a, a piece of metal that you have to drill specific holes for it in order to make it work uh, just right. Um, we have had many different people um, come in and up and down our staircase. Um, we've had multiple people go at once. These are very, a very sturdy system, um, and we haven't had any issues to date. And then they slide together and fold apart, and then it teaches you exactly how to assemble them, and this is a nice image of how they look once they've been pulled out. So you don't see the wood here at the bottom when it's in the pallet form that telescopes out in order to give you the length of the stairs. And then, of course, this is the cost. Um, this is a roughly estimated cost of what it would take for anyone to do version two of the Ryder John Peters Nomadic Gallery, or, of course, their own nomadic gallery at that point, um, and it's roughly $1,500. Um, that, that only, of course, includes the materials, um, so that's only the money part, and doesn't include the time or the people that you need to, to make this happen. We do suggest at least two people. Three is fantastic. Um, it, is, it is technically impossible for one person to do that on their own. Um, but of course, outsourcing this and getting this to come together um, is now our main mission. Um, we want to spread these ideas because we do believe that they're worth sharing. Um, we think that uh, like-minded individuals would like to partake in this kit. We would love to offer it to them. And of course, all we really would like to have in return is documentation of your successes um, with our initial idea. That's all I have for you today. Thank you.